did it they they told us tales they told us lies no more of that because i'll be getting done for copyright so that's finished easy tigers how is everyone sorry i haven't been around i've been mega mega busy plus the sun's been out so i thought i'd make the most of it you know I don't know if you can hear it now, it's pouring down in rain again. And another thing is, Jesus Christ, mate. Almost 12,000 subscribers. Well, I go on there, eh? Beautiful. Thank you very much. And thanks to my Patreons, thanks for everything. Thanks for commenting, sharing. It means a lot. Let's get stuck right into it. Right, so it says the Crown of Vines are described by Francis, or sorry, Father Francois Brunet in his book 2002, The Nouveau Mystery du Vatican. It was allegedly a functional time machine. Brunet is the author of several books on the paranormal and religion. In the book Brunet relates to the coronavirus was built by Pellegrino Annetti, an Italian priest and scientist. Although Annetti was a real person, the existence or functionality of the chronovisor has never been confirmed. Its illegible capabilities are strongly reminiscent of the functional time viewer, which features in the T. L. Sherrod's 1947 fictional novel, E for Effort. So you can already see that they've made a film out of something like this and just so when this pops up in the future, it was just fiction. So before we look at these, uh, or this, this time machine, alleged time machine, let's have a look at a couple of these cats because doing research on this time machine, I found out that it popped up in the 1800s as well. So I don't know what's going on here. If You've got basically a priest in the mid 50s with 12 scientists that knock up, or make rather, sorry, this time machine. And you've also got a group of guys and scientists, or electrical engineers and scientists from the late 1800s that made one of these as well. So I don't know if the people at the Vatican, the one with Pellegrino, if they reinvented it maybe with some notes or I don't know, or, or worked out how to use it, I don't know. This is what I was trying to work out, but what I do know is something did happen. So Pellegrino Annetti, he was basically a Roman Catholic priest and he invented, or he claimed to have invented the time machine called the Chronovisa or Visor. Francois Brunet, another priest and journalist, Peter Crasser, argued that Annetti was persuaded to refuting his claims about the chronovisor. Now this is where it gets a bit weird, right? So it says, in 1960, Annetti began to study the writings of Francois Brunet, himself another Roman Catholic priest and author. Annetti allegedly ended up helping Brunet construct the machine as members of a team which included 12 world famous scientists. He identified two of them as Enrico Femi and Wormer of Bron, other scientists. A bit weird, and now they're all denying it, but it's been plastered over newspapers. It's, I'll show you all the stuff. The time machine was described as a large cabinet with a cathode ray tube for viewing uh, the received events and a series of buttons, levers and other controls for selecting the time and the location to be viewed. It could also locate and track specific individuals. According to its inventor, it worked by receiving, decoding and reproducing the electromagnetic radiation left behind from the past events. It could also pick up the audio components or sound waves emitted by these same events. So it goes to say here, with little digging, researchers will find the first mentions of the coronavirus in 1972 article published in the Italian magazine, Photographs of the Past, finally been invented. So they're saying they made it in the 50s and then 16, 17 years later, it come out in the newspapers. And then I'll show you the next article. Priest in the time machine, fraud or was entrenched authority out to hide the truth. So this is an article 
and it's basically saying that uh, these guys were killed and was it a plot to hide the truth because the people killed were the last ones to know about the time machine from the late 1800s and it was this guy Spalding and, and Davros so I think the guy Father Pellegrino got the idea from this lot and then reinvented it 1950s with 12 scientists but on the right hand side of the paragraph it says Spalding also claimed to have invented at the time of the 19th century with famed engineer inventor Charles Stinmetz, a camera of past events which could peer back into time and even photograph Christ giving the Sermon on the Mount. Interestingly, just like everywhere else, shortly after Spalding's death, it was reported that he had died penniless and he had not done none of the things that he claimed to have done. But if this were so, how did Spalding come upon the numerous remarkable insights which have fascinated generations of New Age readers of life and teachings of the Masters of the East, Far East? So to me it's just a massive cover-up. This guy's invented it in the late 19th century. He's been wiped out and just like Tesla and all these other people, they've, they die skin and in some way laughed upon as what they've done was a joke. See, I don't think Spalding and Father Pellegrino actually met. This is two different time machines. The guys, Spalding invented it in the 1800s and like I said, reinvented or worked out how to use it by this priest, Pellegrino. Here we have another article, Italian article. And it goes to say that uh, the article indicates that dozens of scientists created an artifact that allowed them to photograph the past and even witness important historical accounts directly connected with Jesus Christ. The alleged device, was, which accordingly to many is nothing more than science fiction, was built in the 1950s by a team of scientists led by Father Pellegrino, an Italian physicist who eventually became a priest. Now, I know that the newspapers talk a lot of waffle, but why would a priest, like a world-famous Italian exorcist priest, converted from a physicist, come out with 12 other scientists and talk cobblers? They wouldn't. You wouldn't do it, would you? You'd shame your name. You'd look like a plonker. So, I believe there's truth in it somewhere. Like everything, there is some sort of truth. I'm taking it with a pinch of salt, but something's going on here. Now this is where people are probably going to turn it off because it's where it gets a bit funky. See, so the next few pictures are actually meant to be from the Chronovisor machine. And these are the pictures that are put in the newspaper. It's meant to be the old father, old Jesus in the middle, I believe. I don't think I believe these, to be honest with you. But like this, this is where it's meant to be. Let's have a little look at this machine anyway. And this geezer actually looks a bit like Bill Gates, doesn't he? Look, here we go. So let's have a look at the plans of this machine. See if we can work out anything from it. Not much. Can't really get much from that, but... It looks like a bit of kit going on. It's too... Uh, it's too blurry for me to read, and I think it's in Italian as well. I thought I'd throw this one in, because look at all the tech going on in this room. Again, it reminds me of Campbell's uh, autodidactic, free energy in the castle. But this is one of the machines, and this is what really got my attention on this one. Because it reminds me of the spirit photography stuff we were looking at before. Now check this out. That translation on the left, I'll give you a little translation. That was in Roman, uh, not Roman, Romanian. And it says the Corona Visor is a machine that captures images from the near or distant past in the form of holograms projected in a cylindrical space so you can briefly describe the invention in, of the Benedictine monk Pellegrino Anetti. Yeah, so that's the machine. And it looks remarkably similar to uh, this one here, or the same sort of concepts. Now I wonder if these machines that we thought were spirit photography were actually real and it was like a machine that was invented in the late 1800s. 
from the Spalding guy. Good look at it. And the other thing about it is it has a little camera set up next to it. So maybe what we're not seeing in these pictures, obviously, is the camera taking the image. We're just seeing the image. Maybe you need that camera to see the image. I don't know, maybe I'm just waffling on. Let's have a look. Kevin, let's carry on going anyway. But yeah, I just thought that was very similar to these, um, to the same as the Krona Visor. And again, there's a obsidian ball and it has the same concept. It has all the little devices, levers and everything next to it. It's very strange. But this one, I don't know if this is at a movie or a film or, or it's in a museum or what, I don't know what. But this come up on Google when I was Googling the Corona Visor. And this could have been the one invented in the late 1800s. Or it could even be the one in the Vatican, supposedly. But it didn't have to look like an eye, didn't it? Strange old world we live in. In a nutshell, invented in the 1800s, brushed under, the inventors got wiped out, died skin, or they were killed, reinvented or rediscovered in the 1950s, forced to say it was a lie, died, lonely, books written on it, is in multiple newspapers. I mean, what more do you want? Anyway, I'll leave that one with you. That's just the surface. That's just the tip of the iceberg here. So you've got some information, you can go and have a little looky-wook yourself. See why I go on. So, let's have a look at some other bits anyway. So I'm just going to run through a series of fireplaces. Old world fireplaces from back in the day. And none of them are using fire in them. But what they all are displaying are some sort of devices inside them or plotted up just outside them. So if you look at this one, there's no fire in there. What there is, there's two devices outside. Again with the next one. And it appears to be all wood around the top as well. Now it'll just be covered in soot and the heat would mess it up. But anyway, again, you've got the two little devices inside. And again, here, no fire being used, but devices just outside. And just one more. Well, there's a couple more, but here, again, it doesn't look like you'd have a fire in it. It looks too all night. And here. Have a look. And again. So I believe it was atmospheric energy coming down that chimney. Collected from a higher point. Not much higher, but a higher point. The chimney goes quite high. And it'll come down and do something to these uh, devices, I, I reckon. Maybe heat. Who knows? Who knows? But here you've got the actual devices that I found. But it's all written in bleak in Russian. So I don't know what it meant. I don't know if they're selling them. I don't know if they're, they're drawings or what. But these look identical to what was sitting in the fireplaces. So if anyone's rushing out there, have a go, please. I don't know what that meant. And I can't even copy and paste that either. Anyway. The fake end. Please like, subscribe, comment and share and all that jazz. Let's have a little Brucey bonus. Big up the Bruce. Spruce on the Bruce. Now, I've mentioned this magazine a few times now. It's 113 years old, Modern Electrics. And it was the first volume out. And uh, it's just got a ridiculous amount of free energy devices in it. it talks about all sorts of energy but the only thing is I have eight of these catalogues. 
and it's hard, and they've got like 160 pages, I think, something like that. Um, and it's hard to go through it all. So I literally have to read the whole thing and pick out the best bits, and then I can go to them. But this will just be a little taster anyway. So let's have a look. In this number, you've got the wireless telegraph oddities, the development of wireless telephony, testing a modern electric locomotive, an electric sun alarm, never even heard of that, a silicon detector, construction of wave detectors, a long distance writer, wireless around the world, the dynamo phone, and electric patterns of the month. So if you look at this, you've got little images of pretty much everything just got described there. And you can see a few more as you scroll down. So there's all sorts of tech in this book. So let's have a look. Our premiums. The tubular searchlight, finest imported. Mate wanted to give 80 thousand flashes sells everywhere for one dollar fifty cheap as that has metal flash lamp silver reflectors given to you blah 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 so it says you've got the tubular searchlight the electric scarf pin and the new york motor which is a small motor very very uh, good stuff imported flashlight but anyway, I'm going to do a full in-depth for this. I know I mentioned this before, but I'm going to be doing a full in-depth. For here, you've got the power, electric power plant on the right, which is a Type S Dynamo, semi-enclosed, $5. Here, you've got the Dynamo flashlight. It's $1.50. You wind it up. Want a good electrical book? Look over this list. Dynamo, telephone, motor, storage battery, Wimhurst machine, Magnello, medical coil, Pocket accumulator, plunge battery, voltmeter, galvanometer, hand dynamo, tacking machine, H I H P dynamo or motor, thermostats, electric soldering. All you got all that stuff. You can see this is this is a hundred and fifteen years ago almost. By the way, and half of that stuff on there was free energy devices. And they were, you could literally apply and they'll send you the book. You've got Long Distance Writer. This was a guy that wrote something from Berlin to Dresden, 150 miles away. And uh, one end of the line is connected to a sensitive electromagnet. If little current is sent out from the sender, the, receive, the receiving electromagnet is magnetized little. If much current is cut in, the electromagnetic is energized more giving you a little idea how it works. So like I said, I've got eight of these catalogues. I'm gonna spend the weekend trying to go through at least two of them, just to pick out the juicy bits, just to uh, try and make something out of that. But like I said, in the last video, I'm doing Tartarian India. That is coming, the, the Tartarian Indian. That is coming next. That should be done Monday. Like I said, I had about eight, nine days off because like, the weather was nice and you know we've all been banged up living a bit of a recuperated life shall I say so as soon as the weather was out and everyone was out it was, it was hard not to play you know but I'm back it's going to be consistent and I'd just like to just want to say thanks to everyone for the donations the paypal the love the comments the views sharing my stuff and all the big, there's so many names, I just can't even name them all, but there's big names out there that are shouting me out. So one love, guys, big up. Thanks for watching and all. Ta-da! Ta-da!